Hallelujah and blessings, friends. Welcome back to Haya Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, what a blessing it is to be a member in the family of God, bought and purchased through the Lord Jesus Christ, and filled with the loving, kind, gentle Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is August the 23rd in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is One a Day for the Soul. Now, our text this morning is going to come out of Psalm chapter 19, and we're going to look at the whole chapter. Don't fret, it's only 14 verses, but we're going to focus primarily, hopefully, on verses 7 through 14. So let's read together. The heavens declare the glory of God. Now, yesterday, there were millions of people that walked outside maybe for the first time all year and looked up at the heavens. But friends, the word tells us the heavens declare the glory of God. So I would encourage you, invite you to go out several times in the week and just look up at the heavens. Look at the beauty and the wonder that is there for us. And as you're doing so, let your heart ascend to heaven in praises to God for the great things that he has done for us. Not just the material things and the material blessings of this life, but what he has surrounded us with. There's a purpose to the winter. There's a purpose to the summer. There's a purpose to the spring. And we should allow ourselves to take these things in, absorb them so that we can magnify the God that we serve. Well, it says the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Do you remember in Romans chapter one, it tells us that the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest in them for God has shown it unto them. How? For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. And so the invisible things that it's talking about here many times are the heavens, the work of the heavens, the work of his handiwork, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day after day, or day unto day, as it says in the King James Version, utters speech. It speaks to us. And night unto night or night after night shows us knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. All we have to do is simply be still and know that he is God. Take in all the beauty that he has created around us and allow it to speak to us of his glory, majesty, wonder, and awe. But now notice in verse 7, because this is where for me it really begins to get good. The law of the Lord is perfect. Stop and think about that. The law of the Lord is perfect. Now, as natural human beings, we do not like being restrained. We do not like being confined. And what's so amazing is as the people of God, we find that there's liberty in that restraining. There's liberty in that confinement. I mean, stop and think about it for a moment. Aren't you happier when you're living according to the law of God? Have you ever noticed that a bitter person is bitter? An angry person is angry? A jealous person is jealous? They're consumed by these things. And so even though they think that they have the liberty to do what they want when they want, it makes them angry, jealous, bitter people. But when we walk in the perfect law of God, we're happy. We're at peace. We may not understand it, but there's something in our soul that connects with the law of God. For all men, whether they're following the law of God or not, if they would simply follow the law of God, they would be happier. You would be happier. I would be happier. When we get off the narrow path, we become unhappy people. And so that's what David is telling us here in this psalm. The law of the Lord is perfect. It converts the soul. Why? Because it allows us to see 
what we need to be measured by and how short we are falling. And when we realize that we are falling short of the goal, we repent and we continue to progress in the journey so that we can get closer to the goal. And the repentance is the converting of the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. He's not a liar. What he said is true. And it's sure it can be counted upon. And it makes wise even the simple, even the fool. You don't have to go to Bible college. You don't have to go to regular college. You don't have to be an educated man to be able to walk in the wisdom of the Lord. The law of the Lord provides wisdom from the Lord. The statutes of the Lord are right. They, re they make the heart to rejoice. The commandment of the Lord is pure. It enlightens the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and they are righteous altogether. And so basically David is saying righteousness depends upon obeying and heeding the judgments of the Lord. If you don't heed or obey the judgments of the Lord, you are an unrighteous person. To be righteous as the Lord Jesus himself was, we must convert our souls to following, obeying, and heeding the judgments of the Lord, for they are righteous altogether. They are more to be desired than gold itself, even fine gold, and they are sweeter than honey off of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned. Notice that we are warned. In other words, boundaries are set around us so that we know what to do and what not to do. And in keeping them, there is great reward. Hallelujah. What truth there is to that. There's reward in this life and there's reward in the life to come. Why? Because we are at peace when we follow and obey God. And as stated before, we are happy when we follow and obey God. Who can understand his errors? Now, if you'll note in your Bible, you'll probably see the word his is italicized there. What that's telling you is that was not in the original text. The original text read, who can understand errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. And so David is saying, no matter how hard I try not to sin, I still sin and I don't even realize it because I don't understand errors. So please cleanse me, O God, from secret faults, from even the faults within me that I know not about. Keep back thy servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. So after David focuses upon the importance of the law to each of us, he ends by saying, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, those quiet thoughts within my heart, help them be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Allow me the discipline to be able to discern the things that I should be focusing upon within my heart because I know the mouth speaks from what lies within the heart, just as Jesus said. So cleanse my heart, O God, so that my mouth speaks forth only your truth, only your praise, and only your words. Hallelujah. Well, friends, I pray that this psalm has blessed you and touched you and lifted you this morning. And I pray that you'll walk in great victory with the Lord Jesus being filled with his spirit throughout the remainder of this day. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you, and I'll see you on the next video.